finding the nearest point. Finding the nearest snap point. I will fix this microphone problem somehow. I've slightly made an attempt to fix it just now, we'll see. So, here I am going through the existing snap constraints. I'm saying to each of them, find the nearest constraint to the current position of the mouse in the world. And now I want to say, and I know I've got a problem cut up here, but if C, if SP, length is less than closest p length closest p, p set the way it does that, but anyway. Uh, now, snap equals each in snaps. So the problem that I have is that closest p starts out with zero length. What length do I give it initially? Um, uh, and also, <laughs> this is totally wrong. It's actually... I need to find another vector, which is the distance between SP and the mouse. <laughs> oh, that mic is insane. I don't know how to fix it. Anyway, it's going to be a serious distraction from trying to concentrate on this. Because, yeah, what I really need is more vectors. I hate it. I hate making things like this on the fly all the time. And there is a solution using Monkey, which is to use structs. Sort of a solution, it's just they behave more like a... They behave more like ordinary variables, you know, like classes with members which behave like variables in the monkey language, which is nice, but I just have not quite gotten into doing that, and I don't know if I want to right in the middle of a big project. Well, a project. I don't know if I want to say big. So, in the meantime, what is it I actually need to know? I need to know... Uh, Do I even, in fact, I think no, I can just know the point. I just need a vector out of this. This is helpful to think because before I was just setting it to the mouse world vector. But actually, all I need is a vector. I don't need. Uh, what am I trying to think? But the vector I need, sorry, is in world space. It's not like I need an offset from the mouse. So, I do want to set closest P, continue to set closest P to be that. But I need to know which is closer to the mouse, so totally annoying. Um, okay. Well, I suppose I can just, I mean, I'm using SP all the time anyway, I can do SP. Is this really it? Subtract mouse in the world and well actually, yeah, 
yeah, if I do make closest P relative to the mouse, that isn't a bad plan. But what do I start it as relative to the mouse? Like, I could just start it way off screen. Is that really sensible? What happens? Well, I mean, if it's way off screen, then uh, I'm just going to assume that it's out of the range. In fact, I can just start it at the range. This should inc be enclosed inside another kind of condition where I am determining whether or not I'm on strict or soft snapping. But for the time being, I'm just doing the soft snapping. If I can get through this, then gosh. Um, so, under soft snapping conditions, actually, the length of, you know, the radius of the snap should be long enough, shouldn't it, in theory? If it's outside that radius, then it's not snapping to anything, so. I'm going to have to do that test at the end anyway. So what this vector actually will describe is the point relative to the mouse. So it just needs to be an offset bigger than the radius. So I, don't, I haven't actually decided the snap radius yet, and I think that it will be... I think it's just going to be some kind of global thing. I do set a whole some things here, gosh, yeah, when I remember vert radius max prevrex. I think that is a thing which is irrelevant. But this is a kind of suitable place for it in my brain. Um, so this will be snap radius. And I won't stick it on the end of there. I'll stick it on the end here. This equals something, and I don't know what. But this is actually going to be in world units. Uh, I can set putting it under display things here, but it is going to be in world units. Mm, I'll have to know. I will have to make it in pixels. I think. I would think I will have to make it in pixels. I'm really bad at thinking in these two different frames at once. And I'll make it 10 pixels. Uh, so, I know there's no problem with that line. Stop telling me there's a problem. So, back in work. So I can say snap radius. And this will obviously this is setting something just well I could set it snap radius com zero comma zero. But uh, for some reason I want to stick it just outside that. I'm gonna check it at the end anyway. Because if uh if this remains outside yeah, I'm gonna make it snap radius. If the length of this remains outside snap radius, then I just use the mouse position. Uh alongside the drag handle. So, uh, I hope I'm continuing to get this right. So now, I still say that. Now, I can't do this, though, unless I do this. Do I? No, 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 that's what I do. Yeah. I should probably do that anyway, shouldn't I nest that little if thing, like a good... When it's only one command, I'm always loath to, but... Let me see, is this right? Because now, yeah, these things are all always relative to the mouse position. So then at the end, I can say... If... Closest... Point... Length is less than jink 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 uh, I know it I do <laughs> snap radius then I do something like select 
I learn to type. Select advert. Honestly, set. Uh, hang on. First, I say closest point plus equals. No, no, I can't do that. Add nice world. Then I set this to closest point. Set closest point. And I don't subtract the drag handle. Otherwise, I do that. Let's have a look. Okay, well, <laughs> well, I have no idea really, and I don't want to think about it too much when I can just click run and have it tell me and show me how crazy I've been. It is, I, I've been thinking over how I, I'm going to approach doing the strict snapping and I'm considering that I might, but I don't know, I suppose I, there, as always there are options. I'm going to see how successful I'm going to be with this soft snapping and how, much, how useful it is. And then I will consider the strict snapping again because if there are things that I find I really want the strict, the strict snapping to do, then I might just have to do it. Okay, so I have a pretty new project here with nothing switched on initially, which I'm pleased about, so I can see that under normal circumstances uh, it's behaving normally. Well, now, I can hardly believe that that worked. What sort of scale am I at? Grid 100 and that, okay. It doesn't feel quite like a wide enough uh, snap radius. But when it hits, it absolutely hits. And when I grab the handle off-center, it snaps to it. And then when it comes away, it's still off-center. That is what I want. I want it to feel... Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not. Ex I can't exactly articulate why that's what I want just now, but that is what I want. That looks, man. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm really now. I've got. <laughs> unfortunately. Let's have a little look. Look at that. I just. So, ping. It's always going to be on one or the other. It's never really going to, without strict snapping. Like I can, it feels like it's resting in that little spot, like it's in a what do you call it? Uh, a little Lagrange point, but uh, it's not quite. But I must admit. It's just not that it's. It does feel really like you're able to set both lines because it just feels like it plops in there. But it's not really plopping in there. It's plopping into one, or the other, but never both. Not quite. But on the whole, it's working. Right now, one at a time here. Well, that is working. I want forty-five degree angle things. I will get. 45 degree angle things. And if I switch on this as well, what exactly happens? It only wants to go for one or the other, as always. So it is helpful, but it's not really, you know, it's it's only with the strict snapping where what it's doing is not saying you can ever be where the mouse pointer is, it's saying I'm going to put you straight to the closest place that satisfies all snapping rules. As it is, 
it starts to get weird when you're snapping to multiple things, but that's just that's the rules, baby. That's well, okay. I'm pleased with that. And it'll just snap to the nearest one of these that satisfies. And again, it feels really like it's snapping to both, but it's not snapping to both. Anyway, okay. Let me go new. Yes. Say recursions three. And let's see, just quickly try and make something that has to have a center. I mean, that's not quite right, because uh, I wonder. Well, it's not the reason this isn't quite right is because uh, each of these lines should be the same length and this distance should be the same. But the point is, it makes things symmetrical and predictable. And what I've enjoyed so far is making these wild shapes, but actually, what is, well, the wild shapes were also the change that change from what looks very structured to something that looks very chaotic. It's just nice, pleasing to my brain. But also, what I haven't been able to do is something that looks very symmetrical to something that looks very unsymmetrical. Or not so easily, because just obviously making things fit to a perfect grid is important, starting to drop frames. Drop frames now, baby. But that's great. Do I need the strict? I think I probably do. Uh, am I making that all non intersecting? No, it's not quite. That's a little challenge, is to make an interesting shape which doesn't intersect with itself. Interesting challenge. A thing to do if you've got a lot of time in your hands. So, I do call that a kind of success. I think that this is another thing, actually, though, a thing I had been thinking about in the meantime, is that actually grid snapping should be to lines, shouldn't it? It would be better if it was to lines, and it would be more consistent with everything else, or it would seem a little more consistent with everything else. The angles snap to lines. The lengths, okay, they don't really snap to lines, but it looks a bit like they snap to lines. Um, So that would be a good extension to the grid snapping. Oh, but on the whole, I'm really delighted with actually how correct that looks. What? Although, uh, I find the shape confusing. I suppose, yeah, it's doing three iterations, so. Yeah, that is exactly what I was wanting, exactly the sort of ability to do symmetry. Is delightful. Okay, I hope my mic hasn't cut out while I've been wax and lyrical about the benefits of being able to do snapping. Yeah, when you bring things together, when you bring the beginning and end of the pattern together, it disappears off. And actually, that's an interesting thing. I've never once brought them entirely together. And I guess, I don't know, I can't think through at this moment what's going on when that happens. But it just disappears. Oh, perfect. Now, not quite perfect. I do want to make it snappier, which means finding this bit. I don't know if it really needs to be twice... Oh, well, now I think about it, one problem is I'm not uh, converting the snap radius out of, so before I change that, I haven't... Oh, oops. Well, I'll leave it... I will leave it at 15, I think it could be a bit bigger, but I need to... Uh, oh, where are we? I need to think about... That is so frustrating. I need to think about 
the snap radius in relation to the scale of the display and then I have to, so this means I have to remember which way around this goes so if the display is zoomed out then the snap radius needs to increase so if this display is zoomed out then uh, it's below 1 so it needs to be I, <laughs> I hope this is right divide by project display z wonder if that is right. Got it right this time. wonder if I got it right the other time. I could solve this problem now actually. In fact, I should make project output a, a vector and just... anyway. So, right, I, just without worrying about the scaling aspect of it, that feels nice that it feels snappier. Uh, it's very cool the way it pops into positions. Anyway, I shouldn't get distracted just playing with it. Um, now, the question is where does it look like it is? Because I'm pretty sure uh, I can tell one thing. Just by newing this. Uh, the scale is one to one, so that's how snappy it is, and that looks about right, 15 pixels. In fact, I can help that by saying the grid is 30. Yeah, that's right, uh, so it means I shouldn't be able to run it up and down this, ah, I sort of can, can't I? There's a pixel in the middle I can, so that's... I'll let it away with that. But it means that it really is like... And I, or it'll only be some squares maybe where there's a pixel if it's that tight. But basically I'm one side or the other and there's a bit in the middle where it doesn't get me. That's just as it should be. Uh, now if I zoom in... Oh, yes, sorry, yes, that's right. I've zoomed in and the hotspot is still the same size. So if I zoom out, I, it, I should be in a position where I'm never, yeah, never outside a hotspot. Okay, this is correct. Uh, and, and interesting to be in that position, actually, to never be outside a hotspot. Recursions are at zero. It's really just another interesting effect of it to watch it uh, do the recursions in this way. Well, the other aspect of it is how complicated it becomes. I'm not going to make, I don't think, now that uh, I'm not going to make an, a great effort to make it look less complicated just now. The way I'm going to, well, to frankly, to think about, because this stuff still happens, you know, this is where the, is, uh, where these guides are running along non-existent lines because you're changing the thing at a different position of the animation. It's really confusing all that and I'm not, oops, not quite going to fix it yet. The main way, I'm, the main thing I'm going to do to try to fix it is work on changing the appearance of the different types of line, the different types of guide and the the you know the the thing I have to find a name for which is the overall line and these lines so that they're drawn in a more distinct way. That's the thing I'm going to do to try to make it all more obvious and also when you do find yourself in a position of altering uh, a control which is not at the current position of the preview display. I might make it show lines along there, like I might make it show at least the overall shape in a different uh, shade or something, with a thinner line, or with a, or with a, a, 
a stroked, uh, like a dashed but transparent line, maybe, I don't know. It's going to be through, you know, they're not exactly aesthetic changes, but changes the way it looks that I try to make clearer what it's doing when it's in that situation. Anyway, at the moment, that is just about, and it's so nice. It's, we'll still meet that if that's the closest one to it. It'll still make that the control. Okay, basically, basically, phew. Save all just again in case. Where am I? 25 minutes. So I think then I will spend five minutes looking up and down through this and trying to remember all the bits and pieces I do because it is like all of this is just chucked into work. I don't know if there's any other better place for it, you know. Actually, in a sense, well, I kind of like it this way. I like having the states. When they need to do something slightly more complicated, I do nip out this method. But I have my set snaps. This was, in the end, not required. I'm happy to say. Always pleased to just get rid of stuff. And finished draw is similar to work in that it's a bit of a mess, and that there's a chunk of code all, look at that, there's that first note. Length and angle restraints are applied relative to the corners adjacent to the selected corner of the point in the animation occupied by the selected vert. That bit seems so obvious. Anyway, this bit is no longer required. That is not a grid, that is the origin. Originally, oh, a long time ago, I had planned to make that into something that would draw a grid. And from there on out, it's everything else. Actually, this, uh, the guides, the grid, and where should guides and grid be drawn? Grid feels like it should be at the back for sure, but then guides feel like they should be on top. That's a bit difficult in a way because they both, you know, what do I do about that? Hmm. I'm annoyed to come across that problem all of a sudden. I mean, there are other ways. I don't have to. I don't have to use a linked list. There is a maximum of five possible guides that will be on screen at any one time. But that's as it is just now. You know, there's no reason I shouldn't add. In fact, now that I, I realize the way the system is, it would be very easy to add more sophisticated guides, guides where you define a, a per curved path across the screen, and you can, you know, that is a snappable thing. But that's for the future. The main problem is, I have, you know, I like this way of doing it. It's just... Do I still, in the end, have to make the grid distinct? Or do I just have to draw it in a very particular way? I have a feeling that drawing it the right way might be okay, as long as I draw it, uh, I think, additively. That will make it, well... I will have to really think about it, actually. Because the grid should not be drawn, probably, in a steady line. As I said uh, before, uh, with single color lines, I just don't think there's a way of drawing them. Or at least, may, there might be like a... Not with the options that I'm offered. There might be, I suppose, if I was going to be brave and get into more OpenGL, then I could... There might be an invert draw mode. Although I don't particularly like that either. Although I suppose you could... No. It's all tricky, basically. So, my thinking on this just now is that I'm going to leave them as they are, or will I? I could just stick them at the front, couldn't I? It would mean you'd have, well, another, it would mean you'd have to switch off the grid to view the preview very well. Preview very well. 
but that is a thing I've been considering anyway, which is uh, having a very easy and quick way of switching off all of the on-screen on controls, or most of them, or deciding quickly and easily which are on and off, so that you can get a better idea of the the preview. I'm just talking this over because I'm thinking as I'm looking through this about how I will. Yeah, it draws a fair few things. But I think it's sort of as good as I'm going to make it just now. It didn't take much extra code inside it to. So, inside here, this is something that I want to set aside places for. It's not very exciting, but I think it's a necessary thing. Is it? It's not need. Well, I take that back. It is not a necessary thing. It would just. Uh, I'll leave my debug. No, I won't. I'm going to take them out just for the sake of being somewhat neat. It's probably not a good plan, but so. see if I can see distance angle both used this uses three vectors this uses no vectors that has a guide length and this has a notch vector hmm. this notch length came relevant. And this has a start and an off. Num lines I use a couple of times. Don't check on oh, notch length. I do use notch length. Sorry guy. Just totally. And it's not, it is used, it's just a way of storing how long I want the notches to look. But So, I guess I can store a step vector, notch vector, and curse vector. And I can store distance and angle and somewhere else. Uh, global uh, step vector g vector equals new g. Uh, what was the other one? Notch vector, G vector, and curse of the G vector is new G vector. And yes, I know, Mr. funny feeling this is going to come back to me. I'm going to take these out as well because distance oh come on distance and angle and here distance and angle thing I noticed there was that length step uses length t with the transformed si uh, length of the, the transformed length of the step and this uses guide length so I think that this will become I think I'll just have something called length No, 
nothing else code length. Do I do anything code length? Nope, nope, okay. So length not guide L or guide L or guide L or guide L and not length T, but actually just length and just length and just length and that's it except length and length uh, except length is undefined that's okay I'm about to define it oh I'm getting dry mouth and this is getting quite boring because all I'm doing is this but this is the thing I do and it's nearly over and then I'll be happy enough with this. I realize this is just probably a bad thing to do, isn't it? This is all fine now. No making a bunch of locals for get nearest and doing the same thing there exactly the same. So I think uh, I feel like those things can be cleared up. I might clean them up next time just because I'm getting I'm getting into my 36th minute of doing boring things. Um, I have low near and high near here. And actually, I kind of use something similar in grid snap. Well, grid snap only now has start and off. Let me think. I think I'm just going to global them. And with low near and high near, I'll do the same. I just, I'm sure this is daft. I mean, I, I can, I have, there's a sort of logic in it, which is I'm making space to do the work of these uh, objects and making the space in a place which is relevant only to the relevant objects. But, Kai, that is fine. Don't tell me. And I am going to get rid of all the... That's a bit of a pointless thing. I should have left that one in, I suppose. Anyway, start and off are for that. Length, snap. You go away, I don't like all this stuff. This I will clean, because all of this is common to both of these. Uh, and low near and high near are the ones for this one. to get that wrong, didn't I? 100%. And it's high near angle, which is a weird thing. Okay. Mate, it's fine. Relax. Maybe I'll just do this. Okay, now I have a better thing for this, don't I? I have diff set in diff subtract center 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 dist I have already equals diff length Angle I have already equals diff angle in degrees. The 
this must become angle. This also and this and this and this. Now <laughs> this time I'm just gonna rhyme that straight out. Angle to radians, angle to radians, yeah, angle to this, that, okay, okay. I'm going to check this because actually I'm. Okay. Uh, diff set in. Diff subtract center. Uh, dist. No, hang on, what am I looking at? What is this really? Yeah, actually, I can use dist dist equals uh, this my keyboard's bad, my mouse is bad uh, my mic is bad, well I think the mic might be okay but dist equals okay, no, right, I'm wrong about this sometimes, that's new dist dist just equals uh, diff length is there anything else I have to use because I need a new distance and I need a prop nothing was needed in that one in this one nothing at all is needed let me see. Two extra. Dist angle length num lines. Cut my vectors. And the size transformed. Well, I think I'm going to have to stick this up here as well. And it's going to be. New dist float equals zero and zero and prop. Yeah, I, I kind of understand that proportion. One thing and another. So that is equal to dist size and. Just as equals that, prop equals new dist divided by dist. I should have scale as well in my. I I I, I say I should. I don't. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Scale. So that I can say Y D. Oh, right, yeah, diff scale prop. No, it's not diff, is it? Sorry, it is, it is diff. <laughs> diff scale prop and then diff add center. No, 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 no. And out set set. Ah, I could have done diff. <laughs> In fact, I will. Sorry, this is absurd. Diff add 
center, then out, set, diff, poof. Let's just hope that I didn't completely ruin everything by doing that. I obviously didn't miss anything out because this is working. Slowly, slowly working. A uh, well, assuming I haven't, and there may be things to fix, but generally that's better a bit a bit better I know you're thinking mm. again yeah I always imagine what part of it did I change there that was making it take so much longer than before. I changed a lot of stuff there actually. That's not working. It's not working. Oh dear. Okay. Uh, in fact, nothing is now working. Huh. That one at a time. I thought the grid, yeah, the grid was working. This just not working at all. Ugh, okay. Well, I'm going to go and solve the problems I've just created with this, because obviously I have. And if I switch these two off, working. Switch this on, working. Switch this on, not working. That somehow is, it's like it's offering every possible, that is what I think it's doing. Let me have one last little look at that. Okay, grid on works. Grid on length on works. Grid on angle on nothing works. Grid off length on angle on nothing works. Yeah, angle is returning everything. Angle snap. First off, I should be doing this better. Dist, diff, length, get nearest. Oh yeah, I've really done something daft here. I didn't do the actual sum, which is this. I do need new angle and angle snap. How? What did I do? I need a new dist. Okay, right, no, yeah, I made a mistake there. It's, I, uh, I missed out. New angle. Equals. This bit. Foolish, foolish. And that is... Um, this is new angle. And this needs that. Now, uh, I'm not even going to look closely at that. I'm going to test it and see again like I made those little changes have a thing
think. I think I could possibly be organizing my code better such that the compiler was faster. And I think definitely capturing the video is slowing the compiler down. Wow, 50 minutes just doing this. This is, uh, that's not great. Okay. Snap, 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 snap. Yeah, it's kind of annoying that it won't snap to both. I have a feeling that the the strict snapping might be might be required, but I don't think I'm going to think about it just yet. I think I'm actually just going to uh, enjoy the fact that this does work, and I think I might think about something else for a while and come back to the strict snapping. That's yeah. With the angle and the grid on, you do kind of, I don't know if mixing and matching all those different types of snapping all the time uh, is probably not wise. Is that a surprise? Um, oops, that's not possible anyway, it'll stop you. Three, four. it snapping I'd really like to be able to use the mouse wheel for this and actually my zooming sum is quite unwise see how much slow more slowly I zoom when I zoom far in that's not sensible I zoom all the way out and it gets really fast to zoom very far out so obviously I'm not doing a very sensible sum but that is exactly the sort of shape I wanted to be able to make with snapping. The joy of being able to make it regular is really quite something. Anyway, I'll have a think about what the next subject's going to be because I am going to leave the strict snapping for a while for now. That's 50 minutes of finishing snapping.